Good morning. I can talk a bit louder now. Uh, time for the daily update. So we've had quite a bit of news flooding in. We've had the first of the hostages released on either side, which has led to a real interesting juxtaposition. So on the the side of the Palestinians, we have these like like kids and women. And when they said kids, they meant it. These are like at most 13 year old kids in floods of tears, like kissing the air. There are people celebrating, you know, they are they are just being absolutely enveloped by their community. We have wonderful scenes of Muslim women meeting their mothers for the first time in years and clinging to them. It's just gorgeous. Then on the other side, we have an almost paparazzi style method of trying to get a glimpse of these hostages as they are released from Gaza into Egypt and I believe some have also been released into northern Gaza which I'm led to believe has been quite a bit of a shock for the Israelis who believed that they had cleared northern Gaza of Hamas and in fact they've just popped up and gone oh here's your hostages and popped back down again these guys are fearless but the um the israeli prisoners have apparently had to sign stuff to say they're not going to speak to the media they've been you know immediately barreled into cars they're waving at their captors they're rushing off into egypt or back into israel it's all very cloak and dagger nothing to say here says the manager kind of vibe so a very, very different view of either side. What is freedom? That's what we need to ask ourselves. Those, Israel those Israeli captors, those Israeli hostages, are they going back into freedom? Is freedom not being able to speak your experience? Is that what this is about? Are we not allowed to hear the experience of these people, what they've seen, what they've gone through, what they've borne witness to in Palestine? How long exactly do the Israelis plan on keeping this under wraps? Are we going to see a situation where these hostages leave captivity in Gaza and go into captivity in Israel? Is that what we're going to witness? Because it's looking to me like that might be likely. In other news, we've, of course, got a bunch of Israeli, um, you know, Israelis shooting people trying to get into northern Gaza. But there have been fewer bombs, of course, because of the ceasefire, which is a massive blessing and I don't know about you but I definitely slept better last night thinking that less children would die whilst I was doing so. Um, there has been and I would like to say this I was wrong there's been some new pictures released by the IDF showing new unreleased images from the massacre on the 7th of October, clearly using the bodies that have been taken from Al Shafir Hospital. I'm not going to show the pictures, obviously, because, you know, TikTok would get all pearl clutchy about it, but that's what they've gone for. I think I gave them a bit too much credit in suggesting that maybe they wouldn't do that because it's just so ridiculous and so obvious but that is what they've done. And I, I assumed personally that they would be trying to create another 7th of October to prove that they have a reason for this barbarity, both in occupied Palestine and in occupied Lebanon. But no, they don't even have the good manners to actually come up with something different. They are just simply pushing this same narrative that the 7th of October was so brutal that it justifies them killing, coming up to, what, 20,000 people now? Mental. So that's happened. We've had a um, report, prelim preliminary reports of a cargo ship. Uh, Israeli-owned cargo ship has been attacked in the Indian Ocean, allegedly by an Iranian drone. I don't know the ins and outs of that yet. We're going to have to see, but it was a direct hit. There is 
at least a fire on board, this is a, a huge blow. Because what these um, kind of Komodo attacks on the international shipping trade as it relates to Israel are doing is essentially making it clear to businesses, insurance companies and other actors like companies, governments, etc. That Israeli owned cargo is not safe on the seas. If you were going to ship a load of stuff from China to India or China to the UK or, or you know, Turkey to India or whatever, and you had a choice now, would you honestly use an Israeli ship? Because I have to say I'd probably pay extra for a different one. And I also have to say I actually think a different one would cost less because the insurance premiums on Israeli-owned ships must be through the roof. Now, it's important that we note on an international level what this is really saying. Obviously, there's a ceasefire at the moment. As far as I'm aware, Hezbollah have said that they will honour that ceasefire, that they will not be entering Occupy Palestine while that ceasefire is going on. They've continued to put pressure on the occupied settlements in Lebanon and Israeli media today has announced that the people who have left their homes in occupied Lebanon are not sure when they're going to go back and that they are very angry with the government for not giving them any information about this entitlement or what. But um, the the Lebanese, I believe, are very clear that if this ceasefire is broken or, it, it, you know, if it only lasts four days, that they will again be preparing to go in in earnest. Um, but what the international community seems to be saying with the Black Friday boycotts, which have been super successful. There was a guy on here who was talking about working at Walmart. He's done it for the last four years. He said this year has been super quiet. There aren't people out the door queuing to get stuff. There's not been like large scale rams on buying things because everybody is boycotting Black Friday because of Israel. This has been, I think, the most successful boycott in history. And I think that we should all pat ourselves on the back for being involved in that. Now, what all of this says is Israel... Even if you've called a ceasefire now, we have all witnessed you murdering thousands of people. We've seen what you are. We've seen what you do. We've seen how you keep your house. We've seen how you look after Jews, Israeli Jews, or over and above anything else. We've seen your attitude towards death and destruction. We've seen your children crying about a ceasefire because they're so desperate for bombs to rain on Gaza. We've seen you now. We know who you are and we do not want to do business with you. That's not a reputation that Israel is going to be able to shake. And these attacks on Israeli commerce, whether that's people not buying stuff for Black Friday or magic stuff happening in the seas. This is all saying that, Israel, your time is done. The way you do things is not how we do things anymore. And actually, I kind of see this in a kind of larger scale thing. For so many years, the British, the Americans, the whiteies, we have gone in with this colonial globalist mindset. And this is the world turning around and saying no to that entire ideology and concept, which I think is a really, really beautiful thing. I think it's high time that businesses had to stop and question whether they are morally able to appeal to the minds and hearts of people, as well as whether they're saving a bit of money or creating a good product. All of these things need to be wound in together. And as a community, that is what we are insisting happens. Um, so God bless and well done for yesterday. Let's uh, let's see what happens next. Good morning.